In this movie, you create a custom startup template based on a 3ds Max scene that you define. The five sample templates that ship with 3ds Max 2015, starting with extension 2, are quite fine, but are met as examples. It is inevitable that very soon, you will need templates that are more aligned with your kind of work. Arguably, one quick solution every 3D artist needs is a simple way to generate ambient occlusion renderings. For those not familiar with the term, ambient occlusion is a render shading solution based solely on scene geometry. It's usually in black and white and makes models and volumes easy to read and study. In essence, ambient occlusion, or AO, calculates the blocking of light between scene objects based on the distance between those objects. As the distance between objects decreases, so too does the amount of light bouncing between these objects. Conversely, as the distance between objects increases, the amount of light bouncing between these objects also increases. Here, you create a scene that always renders an ambient occlusion pass, no matter what models you throw at it. If you are new to 3D and to 3DS Max, the next few steps may seem daunting, but the scene is actually quite easy to set up. However, the finished scene is provided to you as part of the downloadable assets, so feel free to skip the next few steps. If you want to follow along, then by all means, let's start. Start or reset 3ds Max. Also, start a session of Notepad. You'll be taking notes that will ultimately help you fill out the description part of the template. In 3ds Max, start by defining your unit setup. This is done under Customize Unit Setup. Click the System Unit Setup button and ensure it is set to Inches, which is the default when you install 3ds Max. Under Display Units, set it to Generic, which is also the default. This basically means that one max unit equals one inch. Enter that information in Notepad the way you would want it to appear in the template's long description. While you're at it, you can also enter a line that defines the scene in a short description. From the standard primitives panel, choose the plane object. With a click and drag in the perspective view, create a new plane object. Set its length and width values to 120. That's basically a square ground surface that's 10 feet across in the real world. Now use the Move tool to center the object to the world. This is done by zeroing out the coordinates at the bottom of the screen. You can do so by right-clicking the spinners. With the cursor hovering above the perspective view, press Alt-W to maximize it. While you're at it, add this information to Notepad, namely that a maximized perspective view is current. Otherwise, the scene uses four equal-sized viewports. If you want, place a teapot with a click and drag in the middle of the plane object. Increase its segment's detail to 8. This is just a placeholder, so you can test out the rendering effect. The two objects are all you need as far as geometry is concerned. Next, you need to make a few rendering adjustments. From the Rendering menu, choose Render Setup. A dialog appears, and you can also access it from the main toolbar, or by pressing F10. First, change the rendering resolution, in the Output Size menu, choose the HDTV Video option and choose the 1280 by 720 preset. Enter that information in Notepad. Go to the very bottom of the dialog and expand the Assign Renderer rollout. Click to choose a different production renderer and choose the NVIDIA Manta Ray option. Ambient occlusion works well with that one. Enter the information in Notepad and dismiss the rendering dialog when done. Try a test render using the render production icon on the main toolbar. The background is black, you need to change that in a moment. Also, the plane object is too small, 
and while that works in the viewports, you may want a bigger expanse at render time. Select the plane and go to the Modify panel. Set the scale value to 10. This means the plane will be 10 times bigger at render time. Try another render to see the effect. To change the background color, call up the Environment dialog. You can do that from the Render Frame window or by pressing 8. Change the background color to white and render again to verify. Dismiss the Environment dialog and enter the information in Notepad. All that's left is to add the ambient occlusion effect. For that, you first need to call up the Material Editor from the main toolbar or by pressing M. Drag in a standard material into the View 1 space. Drag out the Diffuse Color socket and choose Mentor Ray Ambient Reflective Occlusion. Double-click the new node green area to edit its parameters. The Samples value defines the overall quality of the ambient occlusion pass. The higher the number, the better the quality at the expense of added render time. Set the value to 24. Also, set the max distance to about 30. That's how far 3ds Max will look for objects to interfere with one another. Finally, bring back the Render Setup dialog, F10, and go to the Processing tab. Enable the Material Override option and then drag out the output socket of the new material you created into the None button. Choose Instance when prompted. Close both dialogs when done and test render the scene again. In essence, the material you just created is going to override all other materials in the scene and apply itself to all objects. Add a few more teapots if you will and see how they affect one another. Of course, the purpose is not to have teapots, but more interesting geometry. Delete the teapots and save your file. Name it AO Pass. A similarly named file is already provided to you, so you may want to choose a different name actually. In this movie, the file is saved to the C drive under a folder named Custom SU Templates. SU for startup. Update the notepad information by stating what's in the scene. Test out your scene by merging in other projects. For example, merge in the file named F1 car you downloaded for this tutorial. This can be done by dragging it from Windows Explorer into the current scene. Zoom back and orbit around to adjust your view. This is done with a combination of the mouse wheel and the Alt key. Render the scene to see the results. This looks nice. In fact, nice enough to be used as a template thumbnail. Use the Save Image icon on the Render window to save out an image. Name the image aopass.png. It's important that thumbnail images are saved to the PNG format as this is what's compatible with the Template Manager. Dismiss the Render window and reset 3ds Max without saving the changes. You save the scene before importing the race car, which is fine. Go back to the Welcome screen and open the Template Manager window. Add a new template to the collection. As stated before, a new template is blank and you need to fill the information. Start with a title. Name it Ambient Occlusion Pass or AO Pass. To fill the short and long descriptions, use a simple copy and paste from the information you stored in Notepad. For a thumbnail, Select the image you saved earlier. A similar image has also been provided to you. 
Keep note that you can save a PNG image at any resolution. Template Manager will take care of resizing it to specs. In passing, the Snapshot 3ds Max button can be used to take a snapshot of the whole 3ds Max UI, much like you see on the classic startup thumbnail. Enable Scene File and point to the Max scene you created or that you downloaded for this tutorial. If you are in the habit of using project folders, you can set them up in this section. Leave this blank if you place all your resources in the same folder. You can also force a specific workspace to launch every time you start a project based on this template. Leave the default for now, but feel free to experiment with others. You can always change this field at a later time if you so choose. There are a few additional options you can use. If you like the current configurations of rollouts, view cube, viewport setting, or user paths, you can store that information in the template as well. For example, enabling view cube and clicking set now ensures that the current view cube configuration is preserved. This means if you were to make the view cube behave differently or appear smaller or larger in the viewport, it would still revert to this current state every time you use this template. The same holds true with the other options as well. Click Done and see that you have a new custom template that you can use. Give it a try and see how it's behaving. Try merging the F1 car again or try a different model, such as the Catapult. Well done, you have created your first custom startup template. You still need to learn to compile it if you need to export it to another system. Conversely, you need to learn how to import custom templates sent by a colleague or a friend, or simply bought or downloaded online. This is explained in a movie named Importing and Exporting Startup Templates.